you had a WrestleMania show. Yeah, I guess That's in a matter of dark. Huh? Like, this mm-hmm. is exactly what Dan Housen is saying when he brings up the point of you took nothing during this pandemic yeah. and turned it into a WrestleMania post show. Yeah, and technically it was between night one and two. So as far as I'm concerned, it was part of WrestleMania. It was. You know, I watched it after. Yeah, the real challenge was convincing people that it was an actual thing before it happened. Yes, we had talked about this. People yeah. thought you were joking. I have a habit of well posting. Oh. You're not going to admonish me for a swear word? Uh, you're on strike one. Okay, thank you. Just checking. I don't know if Renee has any strike rules. But anyway. And geez, this is the Wild West here. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Um, I was turd posting, let's say. If that's a little, you know, I often make up things. And then this sounded so made up that now I will post clips from it and people will say, where is this from? I cannot believe this is actually a thing. So I, in many ways, I was the boy who cried show. Yes, well, so this is the thing that Dan Housen gets. Sometimes Dan Housen will put something out that is very real. Yeah. And people will also think, oh, he must be joking. Right. And it's not the case. We just work hard and people seem to love us. Yeah, like what kind of schlub would have a shirt in Hot Topic? A schmuck like you? I don't think so. Yes, but then guess right? what? Go to the store and it's right there with, uh, yeah. you know, all the other wrestling people. Yeah, like uh, Paul Roma, and yes. Texas Tornado, all the Paul best in Hot Boston. Topic. Yes. Uh, yes, actually one time uh, Dan Housen's shirt was right above uh, Renee's husband. Oh, yes. you mean you were just holding it above his head? No, he wasn't there. It was his shirt above displayed. Oh, oh, I see. That's a, you know, do you ever do this? It takes in. When I was on a show, I was on a, a Nickelodeon show called Splat a Lot, and at a certain point, it was playing on the children's programming section of the airplane. And I would, when I was on the plane, when I'd fly somewhere, I would put it on my TV, and then look at the person next to me and wait for them to. Do you ever go to Hot Topic? With the makeup on and say... Yes, they kicked Dan Housen out. Oh, that's a shame. He said, that's Dan Housen on the wall there. And they said, well, we don't care. You have to leave. Right. Right. Fair enough. I mean, you, you weren't buying anything. Well, Dan Housen was going to uh, take his free shirts. Yeah, that's the way it works. They have a bowl like mints at the front of the store. Well, if it's your own shirt, you can walk in and grab it and take it out. It's yours. Like, the face is on it. Yeah, you would think so. Hey, well, you know. Uh, now, so you've been invading the bump. Yeah, yes. I've made sporadic appearance and then somewhat uh, slightly less sporadic appearances. Well, because you're yelling at the host about pizza. Yeah. Oh, Kayla? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let, yeah, let me talk about this. Uh, you know, I don't know. You know, Renee obviously has a, has a ghostwriter who made her wonderful pizza in her book. But uh, Kayla was m- munching down, scarfing down on her Instagram some pizza that looked disgusting. It's Detroit style pizza. Yeah, which is not really a thing. Let's be honest. You know what I mean? You don't go like Rome, you know, uh, Brooklyn and Detroit. I don't think it's on the Mount Rushmore pizza. And um, anyway, she went back and forth. She's like, that's my pizza and I enjoy it and blah, blah, blah. And for some reason, I have a computer and I typed in Kayla Braxton pizza. And there was a picture of her. And she was a news reporter covering Billy Gardell's pizza joint. Billy Gardell, of course, of Mike and Molly fame. And uh, yeah, she was tasting that pizza and she's like, this is the best pizza I ever had. And I said, come on, lady, the jig is up. So this does not seem to bode well for you, but yet it does. Yeah. Because you have yet again, another show. Wednesday morning, wake up. How does this keep happening? Uh, With every failure, my reputation grows. It would appear so. Yeah. So now you have a late night show Mm -hmm. and you have a morning show. Yeah, I'm like uh, Carson Daly. Who had a late night show in the morning? Well, Letterman had one, but then the morning show didn't last. Well, we do not know. But also there was a little bit of a crumbuppance, which we'll check if that- Crumbuppance? Crumbuppance. Okay. Between you and Renee, because Mm -hmm. Tuesday Night Titans. Yeah. What happened? Well, uh, USA on Twitter, there was a little hubbub there, and the bump was like, whoa, Tuesday Night Titans, man. And then Renee was like, oh, I, don't know, I like Tuesday Night Titans. And then I pitched it a while ago. And I was like, I didn't pitch it at all. These people are coming at me. And really, as far as the USA Network concerns, I would rather host the uh, reboot of USA Up All Night with Rhonda Shear, Gilbert Gottfried, and me. 
so, that would be a lot so, more exciting. Triple H just comes to you and says, here, you're doing Tuesday Night Titans. You're doing WWE Dark. You're doing, uh, what is that other show you do? Wednesday, uh, they wake up with RJ yeah, in your underwear. Yeah. Yes. And I say, okay, let's first take a picture where you point at me. Yes. And then we'll discuss it. That's what you need. You need him pointing to the logos. Yeah. So show me where. I'll say, show me where, and I'll take a picture. And you, you please point at it. You know what? Maybe Dan Housen will Photoshop some together of Triple H pointing at your logo while you're standing there in your underwear. It will be like when you uh, met Cold Steve Austin. Cold Steve is a heck of a guy, I have to tell you. He seemed to startle you until you left. He got very close to me physically. And you know what's even more intimidating is that he was wearing fleece. So as he touched me, it was also comforting. And then he said, you have to leave. He's not doing your show. Yeah. And then, you know, I swiftly left. He also promised me a hat. If you listen to the episode of me on his show, he promised me a hat. I gave him a pin on the air and he's like, I'll give you a hat. And then the episode ended and he's like, get out of my house. You know what? Dan Housen has a question about this. Yeah. This fellow, Stone Cold Steve Austin, if you will, yes. had a huge problem with being on RJ City coffee in your underwear. Mm hmm this fellow has made an entire career out of wearing black underwear. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this is where he draws this the line. This is where he draws the line is drinking coffee. Yeah. While wearing black underwear. Yeah. You can get tanked while wearing black trunks, but being sober and alert in your underwear is just, you know, some people, that's why people like to, you know, drink when they get romantic or intimate in the mood. They have certain inhibitions because yeah. they're not intimate with their own emotions. And I think that's my goal, you know, in, in media out there in the world. I think that's very important to get in touch with my emotions and then uh, explain them to other people. And hopefully you, hopefully, I'm sure your therapist has is just doodling all over his pages uh, to get in touch with your emotions. I think it's very important. Yes. Well, so the secret of this show is to get you your hat from Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yes. So.